Hi everyone, I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop coming to you this evening with a very small thrift haul. But it's nice to be back after doing a couple of uh, specialty videos in the last couple of weeks. I haven't done quite as many uh, th kitchen counter thrift hauls, but I'll tell you that's going to change because I have been finding so much stuff and I have a huge backlog to be photographed and listed and I got to get busy. Now I promised you in the last video that coming up soon would be an all vintage Christmas video and I'm working on it. But I wanna get all the things photographed and in the shop before I publish the video so that if you see anything you like, uh, you can go and check it out. So the music we started off with is called the Applesauce Foxtrot and that was recorded uh, in about 1923 right across the river from where I'm standing right now in Camden, New Jersey at the Victor Talking Machine Company. I've been a long time collector of old 78 records and that's where I get almost all my music from my own collection. Not all of it, but most of it. A cup of coffee, a sandwich and you, a cozy corner, a table for two. All right, today's cup of coffee is actually Brought to you by the Anchor Hocking Company, and you some of you spied my Orange Luster mug on a pedestal uh, in, oh, I don't know, a recent video. I didn't mention it, so I'll mention it to you now. That's it. Uh, I love it. I have a set of four of them, and I drink out of that often in the fall. Um, it's extra large, so it holds a little bit more uh, coffee, which is always nice. Okay, so let's get to it. You did see this... Uh, I held this up, I don't know, about a week or so ago. I think that's already online in the shop, but about two days later I found the platter. This is the Miss America pattern by Anchor Hocking, and it was manufactured in the 30s. I happen to like it in pink and I only buy it if none of these little points are chipped, and you can imagine there's lots of opportunity for chipping with all of these little points but there's not a chip on any one of these diamond points on these two pieces. So it's nice to have two serving pieces in pink. There's a set of four tumblers and I think they're a uh, hazel atlas. If my memory serves correctly, that's a hazel atlas shape, but it might not be. I think it's blah, uh, let's see, it's, um, oh, I don't remember. Something optic, ribbed, ribbed, vertical, rib, horizontal, ribbed, optic, something, 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 but anyway. They're pink tumblers from the Depression era, and I think it's Anchor. I think it's uh, Hazel Atlas, um, and they are pink, although it doesn't really show up that well here. Okay, there's four of those in really good shape, and there's the uh, cheese and cracker set back there, and uh, what is either a mayonnaise or just a plain old sauce uh, compote for sauce with an underplate. And these are made by the same company. The etching is the same, the gilding is the same. And a lot of you thought it was uh, probably Tiffin, and very well may very well may be Tiffin. Um, so 
It's one of the nice, elegant depression glass companies of the 30s. The gilding is beautiful. I know you already saw it, but I know some of you like to see it when it's out on the kitchen counter. So a cheese and cracker and a sauce plate and compote for the holiday season. I never find Delphite restaurant wear. In fact, this is the first Delphite restaurant wear I've ever found, and it is produced by Anchor Hawking. They did this pattern in Charm, but this is the heavier, clunkier, thicker uh, restaurant wear. That's just a random saucer on the bottom and an the open sugar bowl that happens to just be sitting on it. Um, Fire King, of course, is on the bottom. And restaurant wear, it's a heavier restaurant, you know, industrial, commercial grade to the size and thickness of it. So there's an open cream, open sugar and a saucer. Now, if I had the teacup, I wouldn't be selling the saucer, and I might keep the saucer and wait to try to get a hold of the teacup. But if you're a collector of that, um, let me know and I'll put it on in the shop. That is a powder jar for a vanity. It is green depression glass, and it will fluoresce under a black light, which means it's got a certain amount of uranium in it. I find these often without the lids. I buy them anyway, even when they are lidless because, well, you could do something with that. Here is a tiny little Art Deco tumbler, I'm sorry, shot glass, in a black glass or a black amethyst glass, whatever you want to call it. It's made by Farberware in the 1930s after uh, the repeal of Prohibition, obviously. You can see there's a wonderful mark on it down there. I find these a lot in, in tall stems. I've never found a shot glass before. And this the glass is down inside of the chrome uh, fitting, I guess you call it a, fit, a case or fitting, whatever you want to call it. So that's really nice. The, too bad there's only one, but that's all I could find. You see me with these quite often. This is the first orange one I have found, and it is the Platinite Hazel Atlas Gay Rainbow Creamer, which they sold, which they gave away in boxes of kicks uh, cereal milk milk little these are little milk pitchers you could use them as creamers but uh, and they come in lots of different several different colors I love this uh, it's an it's a small creamer in a beautiful deep blue color and you can barely see in fact I don't know whether you'll see it or not I'll try to get you to see it but it is marked Hall, H-A-L-L, -L, right under there, which is very difficult. And it's not showing up on camera. You'll have to just trust me on that, that it is made by Hall. Uh, I really like that individual creamer or small cream, personal creamer. So I had to buy it. And there are no chips or cracks on any of this stuff, by the way. Two cute little Made in Japan pieces from the 1930s. A donkey pulling a jug for your ashes okay we can see clearly it's made in japan and this is the style that was uh that came out before the war so this is a 1930s piece and this one is too this might even be late 20s let's see the bottom marked twice made in japan i think i've mentioned before there's an infinite number of these made in japan marks that's got, I've seen that one before, the bird on the branch there. Anyway, uh, the jury is out. What is that? Is that a puppy or a cat or some strange figment of someone's imagination over... Oh, look, it's even marked Made in Japan there, embossed in it. As well as on the bottom. They really wanted you to know that this was a Japan piece. And a little bird sitting up there. A little tiny vase. It's cute. I just don't know what that little thing is, but he's cute. Uh, he's, he's not Felix the Cat, so... Anyway, that's cute. And then from the 1930s, this is a Czechoslovakian reamer. Love this. There's the Czech made in Czechoslovakia right there on the bottom. Um, sometimes you see these in glass and they'll say sun-kissed. But this one is pottery, and it's, Czech as I said, Czechoslovakian. A... Uh, orange reamer from the 30s really nice from the 1950s made in california and i can't i know the maker of this but right now it's 
I can't remember. It's actually worn off of the bottom, but I've seen pictures of the bottom of this same garlic pot with the maker's name, and I just can't remember, but it is a California piece. So he's Mr. Garlic with a clothespin on his nose. Really cute garlic pot, and he's in excellent condition. I think there might be one little chip on the inside rim right there, which is not even something to blink your eyes at, but it's there. So that's cute. And then a jam pot, also from Made in Japan, and this is also the 1920s or 30s. I'm sorry, not a jam pot, honey pot. And this is really neat. Let's get this coffee out of the way. I love this with the bees on it. And there's this place for you to put your spoon, and it's not chipped at all. A little, little honeycomb, or beehive, whatever that is, and it's attached to the underplate. And it has, the, as I said, the place for the spoon. That's cute. Very 1920s, 30s. This is a thing that would come out in the 1930s to go in your closet. You could hang ties on it. Normally men would hang neckties. These are pretty long, so you could also hang belts or whatever you want from this. And then it goes up against the wall easily. So that would be nice for an, for an equestrian uh, friend of yours this Christmas. And then I have three boxes of vintage saw, vintage, um, hmm. Isn't that funny how it just, you know, it just, it's there in the brain and then what happens to it? It's called stationary. Okay. So I think this is 1940s, 50s. This one really looks 50s with the poodle and the uh, woman in the old-fashioned dress. This is made in America, and I have two of these that are identical, un completely unused. I'm not going to pull it out, but there are 24 envelopes, and you get 12 note cards and 12 sheets of writing paper. This, All of this writing paper, by the way, is listed in the Old Curiosity Shop right now. So... Uh, yeah, these are, uh, so not everything here is listed yet, but some of it is, and I apologize, I really try to get everything listed before I do the videos, but I'm behind this week, so, um, I did, however, get caught up in the things from the last video, so, there are a lot of new things in the, uh, in the shop right now. This set right here is also American made, high tone quality, wicker weave, and this is an unused set. Once again, it's 24 all together. Very nice uh, in, uh, old stationery. New new old stock, I guess you could say. Very nice. Unused stationery. All right, so that's up for sale as well. All right, so let me back up, make sure we got it all. I think so, that's everything. Um, welcome new subscribers. This video was a little rushed not quite as organized as I usually am, but as I said, I'm trying to get everything caught up so I can bring you my big vintage Christmas haul. I think you're going to love it. Okay, everybody, it's going to get freezing cold this weekend here. It's already been cold, but boy, is it going to get cold. And I know it's cold in many places across the United States, so keep those pets inside, bundle up, and check on your neighbors if you think they are without proper heat and so forth. Thanks for watching. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Hi everyone, I can't wait to show you this. Um, I've actually been holding on to this radio for months and months and months, put it aside, and I started fiddling with it recently. Uh, it had actually been restored at one point in the past, which is clear, but it had a bad filter capacitor and I was getting that awful loud hum that you get when you turn on an old tube radio and the capacitors are shot. So after placing one of the filter capacitors in and putting a new line cord on, this old 1931-32 Philco is uh, back in shape. So I'm going to turn the camera around and fire it up. Now it's in the middle of the day here, and there's probably not going to be much on AM. You get much better reception at night. But we'll see if we can pull in a few local stations. All right, let's dive on in here. Now, you may remember this from, a, oh, I don't know, a couple of months ago. Uh, this little guy right here, I'm still, I haven't really done anything yet. This is an Emerson from the very late 
1930s. This might even date to about 1941, 1940 or 41. Uh, I can't remember at the moment, but the cabinet is in good condition and it, everything is there. I just haven't had an opportunity yet to monkey with that. But this, woohoo! This is an original Philco Cathedral. This is the. Uh, this was a famous design, an enormously popular design. These have been reproduced. This is the real thing all the way. And th this particular, this is the Baby Grand, which is the model, I think, 70. And then there was a model 90, which was a, even a little bit larger than this. But it's a tabletop Philco. That's the original finish on it. I did a little restoration. I'm gonna let you see the whole thing and then we're gonna turn it on and see what happens. Tiny, tiny knobs, a very small escutcheon plate and a little tiny dial, which is not that easy to see, but there it is. Beautiful shape. And this, uh, I don't know how many of these sets were made. You can look it up. I mean, not you, but a person can, can look it up. <laughs> and, but, it's not a rare radio. Uh, hundreds of thousands of them were produced, but it's very sought after by collectors. They just love this classic uh, cathedral design. Before I turn it on, and it weighs, it's a heavy radio. It must weigh 50 pounds. Let me, can I spin it around? I think so. Okay, so I'll let you see the back of it. Um, and there's a little bit of the sticker left up there, not much. Here are the specifications. I'm sorry, my camera's jiggling a little bit. This is the uh, Super Heterodyne Model 70. Yes, Model 70. Manufactured by the Philadelphia Storage and Battery Company in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. With all the patent dates and everything. And these are the tuning capacitors here. There's three. There's the transformer. And then uh, beautiful shielded here. These are just absolutely beautiful. Made in USA. And I, these, I polished all of these up. Really clean to this chassis. Uh, as I said, it had been worked on before, but it, it, still, it still needed some touch-ups. It's back in the cabinet. Now don't get too excited because we're not going to hear Bing Crosby singing where the blue of the night meets the gold of the day, but we'll see what we can get. Now this is the antenna, excuse me, and so I'm going to be pinching that with one hand, but let's turn it, turn it on and see what we get. Now remember, you old timers know that vacuum tubes, what do they have to do? They have to warm up. Oh, you didn't get to see, that was off camera. Let's do it again, that wonderful click that you get. Listen for it. Love it. This is the volume right here. And this is a, this is a tone control here. So we'll zoom in. Oh, wow. I should be pinching. See what happens when I pinch the antenna? My body is acting as the antenna, so let me hold the antenna with this hand. Now we can turn it down a little bit. Let it happen. I mean, obviously. He's almost one. Are there no mistakes? Stevie Lickers, and it's safe to say that we're not thirsty. college athletics is a really special thing. Provide the ability for our student athletes to be able to benefit just like anybody else would be able to benefit. That's tone control. control. In California together. Hey. <laughs> Hear the difference? To use a. 49 Hotel theme park. Money laundering. 
laundering for drug dealers in the company accusing it of I'm trying to find you some music that brought us from death to life something it's another kind of calling that a sermon Now, see, if it were in the evening, the one I would... who has to make all the sacrifices yeah. to make sure that that person. Courage, too. Is it rough? Okay. Well, we're not going to get any music right now, so we'll just uh, turn it off. And uh, let you see it again. If it were evening, I would be able to pick up. Uh, and right now, I'm down in uh, South Jersey, so I can still get the New York stations and the Philadelphia stations easily. But because it's midday, I'm not getting much. But I wanted you to see it. Um, I'm thrilled with the way it turned out. And uh, thanks for watching. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, saying once again, thanks for watching, and so long for now.